Okay, guys, this is my sit-up. Uh, I thought I'd just uh, try and get a bit on camera here before I before I closed it down. In front of you, you can see a, an LED bulb that's lighting up from a 12-volt battery, the power supply for this Bendini schoolgirl motor, schoolgirl circuit with a bicycle wheel, and a few bifiler coils on there. Now, they're all individually wired up with a neon bulb. And um, I've been receiving quite a substantial shock off the back EMF of these, um, of these coils. So, um, I, over the last few months, I've spent quite a bit of time looking at them, putting them together to see what I can get. At the moment, I don't have two batteries running. I have one battery, which is powering this whole thing, one 12-volt battery. Here just got a little coil that's running and it's uh, beeping out a little diode the reason it's flashing is uh, simply because uh, the um, the magnets on the wheel one of the two of them have come loose and they're not even so we've got a little bit of a flash on there that's the original coil down there if you can see it that's the original coil in there yeah the bifiler coil 22 24 I think it was or 26 28 I can't remember and then I added another one another one those two are evens even Stevens those two and then we've got one or two more coils here that are uh, connected up with 3055 um, transistors which are just switching on and off giving this thing a little bit of punch to go around I'm not really bothered so much about the spinning of this thing because if I if I stop it I might just point out it's got quite a lot of torque one has to be quite careful these magnets are not horizontally opposed perfectly so when it stops you will see that is actually creating back EMF simply by vibrating across the pole not all of them are doing it because not all of them are identically uh, directly in front of the magnet but there we go just by standing still that is creating a back EMF. There's the other one down there. I'm sorry, it's a little bit of a mess. This has been like this for a few months now. I just, I'm going away on holiday, so I'm shutting this all down now for quite a while. But there you go. You can see that is actually creating back EMF just on the um, standing still. Just vibrating, just a very, very small uh, vibration. Now I'll show you that by... Um, I'm going to short out this capacitor, but before I short out the capacitor, I'm going to take a reading. So let's just try and do one hand reading and one hand hold camera. So if we can have a look at that, we can have a look at that voltmeter there. It's set for a thousand volts, and here we go. Well, that's not doing much good. Let's see if we can short this capacitor out. Well, there you go. That gives you an idea of the voltage that's being built up just on the back EMF. Look at that. That is just back EMF without even the wheel spinning. It's actually it's actually taking chunks out of this um it's taking chunks out of the um the uh the voltmeter probe. Here we go again. Straight across this capacitor. Look at that. I'm going to put a, a bulb onto this now. I'm going to put a bulb onto this capacitor. This is just a capacitor out of a washing machine out of a fridge or whatever it's um 400 volts and it's 10 uf so it's not holding very much but here we have a bulb i'm just be careful my eyes i don't have goggles on now look at that bulb do you see that bulb lighting up it's not lighting up a lot no there's no big deal but look at that bulb the wheel is not spinning this is just on vibration now i have to be a bit gentle these wires are not all that good there we go we've got it now can you see that bulb lighting up there look at that there you go. As you can see there, we're pushing 232 volts. 232 volts. And when we start the wheel up, 232 volts. There you go. 236 volts. I'm going to short this capacitor out here. Look at this. Look at that. That's free energy. Look at that. Bang. Like a bloody welder. 
like a welder. Look at that. That's free energy for you folks, free energy. And there's your voltage. 232 volts, 232, it does go higher. Why it's stuck at that, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm not complaining. I'm going to stop the wheel now, put it into its oscillations, and look there, you can see we're getting 234 volts, 234, and that's just on the oscillation of the actual wheel standing still. We've got one dead one there, possibly one coil not working. But there you go, just gives you an idea just the oscillation across. You can see the actual wheel is moving very, very slightly. It's slightly oscillating. And you can see from that slight oscillation, I don't know if you can actually see that oscillation there. I'll just hold it very still. There's a slight oscillation, and that oscillation is giving us this, this back EMF, which is running at 232 volts there. And um, you can see from my machine, my machine is set at, um, I'll just put the light onto it, my machine is set at a thousand volts there. That's what the machine set at, a thousand volts. Let's wipe that. You can see up, I haven't been up here for a while, it's a bit dusty. 333 volts. Look at that. What a whack. That voltage there was pretty high. Um, I'm going to stop the old wheel again, put it into its oscillations. You see the wheels are back into its oscillation and it kicks off by itself now. Well, there you go, folks. That's my experiment with a Bendini schoolgirl motor. I'm about now to take it to pieces again. It's not connected to the charge side, so I've got the, uh, the neon lights going. I've had a very good, uh, very good, um, interesting time with this thing. I certainly haven't finished. I've got too many unanswered questions here. I'm not an engineer, but thinking or attempting to think a little bit outside of the box, there certainly does seem to be something outside of the box here. Now, whether these coils are storing up this energy from the char from the battery and then releasing it, who knows? But from my experience of running this thing now over the period of about six months with two batteries, I seem to be getting one battery charging more than the other battery is discharging. And that is my honest, um, my honest opinion so far. Nothing permanent, nothing definite written down on this. But uh, it's been good fun. And uh, I think there's great potential here for something more. If I can pull 240 volts out of a 12 volt system, um, I will be checking the voltage of this battery. It was fully charged at 16.3 volts. I'll switch this off now and check the voltage just to see how much I've used out of this battery. But there's certainly great potential here. And I've wasted quite a lot by shorting that cap capacitor out. I've ordered a, a bigger capacitor that so there might be a part two to this before I do close it down. I've ordered a big one off eBay, and um, I'm hoping from that 240 volt capacitor that we can charge that up completely, uh, 16,000 microfarads, and maybe we can get a bulb to work. But at the moment, we've got a bulb to uh, dimly light up, and who knows what we can do from there. Possibly we could even light up a um, fluorescent bulb. But certainly uh, with a few more capacitors being charged, I can't see why 240 volts can't be pulled out of this thing. How much it's going to take in, I do not know. And how much back EMF can be stored, I do not know. But there's an awful lot of back EMF that I am not using. As you can see, flashing away here. One of them, two of them. Three of them up there. And one down there doesn't seem to be flashing today. But there you go. So, that's all, folks.